it's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Black Hole. Copyright 1982, Creative Software by Tom Griner? Mm. I don't know any... what, what, what... I don't... oh, oh god. Holy crap. Well that's cool. Funny, they actually look like Cobra Mark Threes, is it? But that's good, we've got gravity that's like pulling us into the... Well, it doesn't really look like a black hole to me, it looks more like a star, but there we go, it's, it's pulling me in. Oh! I like this. And it right, reminds me of like Space War, but one player. Oh, what's going What? Why? What? What is going on? It's like, ooh, 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 bollocks. That's nice. And while there is gravity, it's not too overpowering. And there isn't too much inertia in your movement. You don't have too much momentum. It's like you thrust forward as soon as you stop thr Oh, God. As soon as you stop thrusting, you stop moving. And I like that. It makes it easier to control. And it was probably easier to program as well. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, this is un ooh, unusual. Ah, and that's just a great sound. Oh, excuse me while I kick the tripod. I'm not so keen on the, f the firing sound. Boo! Oh, but that's a great noise. Yay! Okay, cool. I don't know why it made that noise. It made a little tune. Oops! What the hell? What? It's getting a bit. I don't know what these things are that I'm shooting at. Not a clue. But not that it matters. Are they are they spaceships or are they just I don't know random debris from some space disaster, crashed ship, exploded ship, whatever? No, no idea. Interestingly, they do seem to be. Um, polygonal things like they, they seem to be in 3D if you look at the, the way they when they rotate that's kind of interesting oh oops dull ah oh, that was dumb wasn't it yeah let's just fly how many ships have we got left are we on the last one? I don't know how many we started with, but we seem to have had quite a lot, which is good. Oops! And probably just as well. And we're still going. Okay. Oh, oh bollocks. I didn't see that one coming. Some of them I saw coming and just flew into them, but that one I didn't see coming. The end. That, I mean, yeah, that's interesting. There's some good technical stuff going on there that you don't see all that often on VIC-20 games. Vector graphics of a sort, kind of, maybe. Um, I like it. I, I, I like stuff that's unusual and out of the ordinary and, and whatever, and that is. So, uh, yeah, Black Hole by Tom Greiner. Yeah, all right, I'll shut up now. Thank you for watching. Hello. Different setting from usual. I'm at Andrea's place. The power is out at my, my place and is going to be for pretty much the whole day because they're doing some maintenance work there. So uh, I'm here. I don't strictly have everything I need, but <laughs> we're going to do what we can. Um, okay, so today's question from Q&A, looking at my laptop over here, 
is from Atari2600 Dude. Link to his channel down there. Okay, for Q&A, the big three of the 80s consoles, Atari, Nintendo and Sega. Name your favourite console or handheld from each and why. Okay, um, interesting question. Atari, uh, my favourite is their least capable system, which is the 2600. Um, and the why, it, it got to be nostalgia, really. Um, it can't be down to performance. The 8-bit computers and the later 8-bit consoles were all more powerful. And the 16-bit and... and I mean, I don't, I'm not a fan of the ST at all. In fact, the ST is probably... I've never used a 5200, so I can't have an opinion on it. But, I mean, as far as I can tell, it's much the same as the um, XEGS and the 8-bit computers in terms of performance. They're, they're all based on pretty much the same hardware. Um, and I do like them, but it's all about nostalgia. Um, I love the Lynx, or at least the Lynx 2. I've never used an original Lynx. Um, but they're just, there aren't enough games and I don't have any nostalgia for it. I didn't have one back in the day. Uh, I love the Jaguar, even though the games for it are largely crap. It's that underdog thing. Um, it's so bad that... I won't say it's so bad that it's good. It's so bad that it's bad, but I like it <laughs> because it's bad. Games like um, Club Drive have to be careful, not drive club, club drive. It's appalling, but I love it. Um, but no, the 2600, I got one in 1983, and it was my main gaming system until 1986, when I got an Acorn Electron, and I had quite a lot of games for it, maybe 30 games, perhaps, not sure. Um, and I played it to hell. I just, you know, every day, gaming, loved it. And I still love the games on it. I still think many of them are really, really playable. I mean, favourites, Battlezone, Enduro, they're my two main go-to games. I like Galaxian, I like Defender, even though it wasn't a great conversion. Um, Adventure is just so... <sighs> It's iconic. It was, I'd never played, when the first, I remember the first time I played it and I had never seen anything like it. And I couldn't believe they could do something like that. And never mind do something like that on the system you could have at home. Blew my mind. Um, yeah, it, for me, the 2600 was just such a, it opened up a whole new world. Like no other home console ever has. Um, it, the, the difference from no home gaming to that kind of home gaming was immense. I mean, you've had leaps from console to console. I mean, from, from Mega Drive to PS1, which is a leap a lot of me, people made, was pretty immense. But from nothing to what the 2600 could do, especially given that I got into it, well, I won't say ever so late. I mean, it went through right right into the 90s it was still going pretty much um, but just going from nothing to enduro was like mind blown yeah so that's my Atari favorite um, what do we got next Nintendo okay I have difficulty with Nintendo because I'm not a Nintendo fan in fact I can be quite scathing when I think about them, mostly do not like. And it's not about the hardware, though sometimes it's about the controllers. Um, it, it's the whole, it's the Nintendo first party stuff. Don't like it. Don't like, ma it's Mario, really. That's what it's all about, it's Mario. Nintendo, to me, they are the Disney of video games. You know, Disney movies are aimed at a certain uh, demographic, and so are Nintendo games, and I don't fall into that demographic. However, they do have a system. Actually, they've got two that I like, one that I love. 
I like the Virtual Boy and I like it because it was groundbreaking and unique and there was nothing else like it at that time for a long time. Thank you for that, Bay. Mm -hmm. Shut your gob. Mm -hmm. Don't care. We don't need your input right now. No, really. We don't. No. Shh. He can see outside. I've got the curtains open so I can get a bit of light on me. But he's being a knob. Isn't ya? Knobhead. Mm. Um. Where was I? Yeah. Virtual Boy. Um, just nothing else was doing 3D like that. I mean, that I think you could get some like PC headsets that were very limited and there was very limited software for them, that kind of thing. But in terms of a consumer product, off the shelf, all in one, not exactly virtual reality, but as near as you were going to get to it at that time, it was really impressive. Uh, I've got one. I like it. Uh, it does give me a blinding headache after half an hour, so, you know, I don't use it a lot, but I like it. But my favourite is the Game Boy Advance, specifically the Game Boy Advance SP, uh, well, what are the letters and numbers, AGS 101, the one with the proper backlight. GBA games, to my mind, are the perfect handheld games. Um, apart from the fact that there's tons and tons of retro gaming on there as well, retro, retro compilations that are really good, they're good versions of classic arcade games. Uh, GBA Gaming, it, the games are, they're big enough to have some depth, but small enough that you can just pick up and play. And that, when you, you're playing handheld, is what you need. Pick up and play. You d I don't want a big storyline. I don't want something that I've got to remember what happened when I come back to it and if I've forgotten I just can't get back into it again and that's a problem I had with the PSP. Shut up Milo. That, just, and zoo. Welcome to the zoo. Yeah. Um, I think they got a better balance with like on the DS and probably the, the 3DS Nintendo just do handhelds better than any, anyone else, but the DS and 3DS, too big to fit in your pocket, really. The, the GBA SP, perfect size, literally. I mean, the, the, Game Boy, the Game Boy Micro, fantastic in terms of portability. You could cram that into just about any pocket, but my eyes are so absolutely knackered that I really struggle to see the screen, and it's so small. I have small, for a man, I have small hands, but even I struggle with those um, shoulder buttons. They just cramped, cramped my fingers up. Um, I had to, like, put your hands into that kind of shape just to try and push the damn things. Trying to play, I mean, in some games it didn't matter, but games like Doom, which I wanted to play, uh, trying to play Doom on the uh, Game Boy Micro, impossible. Just your fingers fall off, you know, they explode and fall off, um, but on the SP, perfect, that, that to my mind is just the perfect handheld, don't care that there are more advanced systems, um, it's just to me the perfect balance, uh, I mean yes, there are things that have come along later, like the um, GPD XD, which, okay, that to me is the perfect handheld, really. It's a little bit... Well, it is and it isn't, because I don't want to carry it around in my pocket, because it's quite an expensive thing, and I don't want it getting scratched up or nicked or whatever. But in terms of performance, just unbeatable, to my mind. Um, but for a portable handheld thing, take it anywhere, play it anywhere, not scared that you're going to break it, lose it, get mugged for it, Game Boy Advance SP is just perfect, and that's that's me. That's my Nintendo choice. They've done more powerful, much more powerful systems. They've done more advanced stuff. They've done more clever stuff. But in terms of balance for gaming on the go, nothing touches it. Uh, Sega, tricky one. My answer is 32x. 
I don't know. I always struggle with this because the 32X is not a standalone system because you need to have a Mega Drive with it. So when you're saying 32X, what you mean is 32X and Mega Drive, and that's two systems. Um, whatever, that's going to be my answer. Um, why? Well, you've got two systems. You've got 32X and you've got Mega Drive. So you've got this massive library of Mega Drive games, which Nintendo did more advanced stuff on the snares, but that was Nintendo, and I've already said what I think about their stuff for the most part. I I found Mega Drive stuff more edgy, and I like that. But 32X, I mean, I oh, Virtual Racing, that's it. That's all I need to say. Virtual Racing, Deluxe. Um, Mind-bogglingly bloody awesome. It was the first time I ever played Virtual Racing on anything, because much as I wanted to play it in the arcades. None of the arcades anywhere near me had it. I've n still never seen it in an arcade anywhere, ever. Um, but a game I did see in the arcade and played was Star Wars Arcade. And that, same hardware, pretty much. Uh, love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and so to be able to play that at home was like, yeah, and sadly, I, the emulator I use on on the various Android handheld ha, Android 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 handhelds that I use won't run at Sega's at Star Wars Arcade. It, it just won't do it. Um, so the only way I get to play it is if I'm running the yeah, actual 32x. I haven't got a version of Mame that runs it either. I should get a more modern version of Mame. Um, the ones I run, like the Android ones, they're based on an old set of cores or whatever. Um, and the, the MAME I've got on my gaming laptop is also, it's pretty old and it doesn't run it either. So um, I should get a more modern one. Love that game. And the thir also 32X was the first system I ever got to play Doom. I had seen Doom running in shop windows on PCs for years and the kind of PC you needed to run it on was more expensive than I could afford. Uh, you know, these were not... What were, What did you need? Was it a 50 megahertz 486? Something like that. Uh, I couldn't afford a thing like that. So, um... 32X, when I found out that could play Doom, it was like, gimme. And, of course, the 32X, it has a special place in my heart, being the console that got me through my first broken heart. I've told the story many times, playing virtual racing Christmas Day, crying my eyes out, but that it was a hard time. I was heartbroken, and the only thing I could do to distract myself from it was play video games, and the best video games at the time that you could get hold of if you didn't have a powerful PC was the 32X, and I played the hell out of it. I suppose you could get 3DOs at that time, but uh, <laughs> I didn't have a spare £700. When it, it what did it cost? Was it 150 quid? I think it was. Yeah, bought it brand new. Three games: Doom, Star Wars, Virtual Racing, and that was pretty much all you could get for a while. It, uh, there were other games that I just wasn't interested in. There was some motocross thing. Didn't care about that. I think I've played it since and think it's crap. Uh, you know, it was those three games and that was it. Later I got Metalhead. Um, and that was all I ever had. They were hard to get games for. But that's my answer, and those are my answers. So my thanks to Atari2600 Dude for those. Um, if you've got any questions you would like answering, leave your question in the comment section below. Begin with for Q&A, so I know not to um, answer in the comment section. And now let's see if I can edit this thing together. Um, and not run out of... No, I did bring my power supply. I won't be running out of battery life. <laughs> uh, do I have all the files I need? I've got a, I've got the, um, the list of patrons 
on here. I'm hoping it's up to date. If uh, if any patrons find themselves not on the list at the end of the video, after you know in the credits, apologies. It's because I've got an out of date list on here, but I think it's up to date. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching. Ah yes. So I think the button that releases the hound to that subscribe button. <laughs> oh.